All right, so um, I'm about to throw you into the next part here, um, 14C, here it is. Now this looks a lot more disgusting um, because you don't have the, um, the added value of a diagram that does a lot of thinking for you, but I promise, I mean, look at this, it's the same number of marks, right? One mark, two marks. Um, this first question, or uh, first part rather, once you see through like, whoa, where did that, you know, um, N choose K notation come from, once you're willing to push past that just a little bit, you will see why it's only worth one mark. And part two should fall out if you're careful with your algebra and your trigonometric identities because um, I mean it doesn't take someone who's an expert at extension 2 to see this is a trigonometric identities question all right so it's 231 I'm going to give you about four minutes to have a go at this so 235 by my clock we'll come back together as usual just post in the chat if you got any questions you're like I'm struggling I need a hint you're welcome to do it privately if you prefer or let us know if you're like oh that question was surprisingly quick. I am totally done. Um, and with any luck, we might even be able to finish this lesson early. I better not jinx it. So there you go, four minutes, good luck. Um, I think that's probably enough time for you to make, um, even if you're not finished, um, enough progress that we can uh, helpfully work through this together, okay? So let's start off and as promised, even though it's very intimidating, I think you'll find part one pretty trivial. So if you were like held up by it, I think that's a lesson to you that it's like, ah, oh, even if when it's a little bit gross looking, um, don't, be, don't freak out. It's actually often quite manageable once you see through the notation, okay? It says, given a positive integer n, show that, and then they take this sec to the two n theta. So just remember what that means, right? That's just sec theta raised to the power of 2n, show that it's equal to, and then they use sigma notation here to indicate um, that there's an expansion going on here, right? So you can see here, it's like, oh, this thing raised to a power, um, if you can use some identity in here, it's gonna, if you think about the Pythagorean identity, um, in fact, if we didn't take out that two, if it would be left inside, you've got a sec squared there, and you can do a substitution I'm gonna show you in a second, which will get us over into the land of 10, okay? Now, um, uh, it's not a very well kept secret that I have a horrendous memory. So um, even though I just referred to the Pythagorean identity just now, I have never ever once remembered like, and I've been teaching for like 15 years. I've never remembered the actual trig identity for sec or for cot or anything like that. I just remembered like the vanilla version, um, which let's write our part one working here, which is just sine squared plus cos squared equals one because it's not very hard to get from this to any other identity that you need. If you want things in terms of sec squared, you're dividing through by, think about it, think about it, you're dividing through by cos squared, right? And that's what will give you the sec squared on the right hand side. So all you need to do is, well, if you divide that through by sec squared, you get tan squared, that'll become one, and then here comes sec squared on the right hand side. Now, in order to get us up to this result up here, as I said, having the sec squared there in the brackets, all I really need to do is to raise both sides to the power of n, okay? Now, please note here, I'm just writing, I'm gonna write this in blue, you're raising the entire side. Um, you're not raising just those particular trigonometric terms. And sadly, this is actually a common error that students made, don't write this down. Um, but when they said, oh, I need to raise this sec to the power of n, uh, this sec squared to the power of n, I should have said. Um, I also need to raise the um, tan squared to the power of n, and they wrote something like this. Um, you know, press F in the chat for everyone who tried this because you couldn't get any further if you wrote this down because you're like, oh, where's my sigma notation? Like there's nothing to expand, right? So um, yeah, don't, don't do that, that's a, that's a bad idea, okay? Now, once you've got this, the left-hand side is fine, or rather the right-hand side, which will become the left-hand side, is fine. It's a sec to the power of 2n theta. And then over on the right-hand side, I just need to do a very brief expansion here, right? Um, I'm gonna do my binomial coefficients. So you start with n, because that's the power that you're raised to. Um, you get the zero term first, and I'm actually gonna write it sort of backwards. I'm gonna treat this as one plus tan squared, just because of the way that they've written this result here, right? You can see their k, is matched up with this k over here, so those powers match. So I essentially want this zero to be the zeroth power of tan squared, even though normally we would take the thing that's written first, I'm gonna take it second. So you just get an nc zero out the front, you're gonna go over to the next um, 
power there and then you've got a tan squared. Um, I should point out there's really a 1 to the power of n here and a 1 to the power of n minus 1 here um, but because it's just a 1 I don't need to worry about it, it doesn't make a difference. How far do I need to go to establish a pattern? Answer three terms generally does it for us right so this is going to be tan to the 4 now and then how far do I need to go? Well I just want to get to the end what's the final term um, and it's n choose n and you get up to this tan to n theta term over there. And that's pretty much it, right? This is, I can just use sigma notation here um, to express everything on that top line, just taking it bit by bit, right? So I start at zero, I go all the way to n, you get your binomial coefficient out the front, and then you get the, the tan term, um, but this is not tan to the two n, it's tan to the two k because that k value is the thing that's incrementing as you go along. Um, obviously you could have used any other letter r or s or things like that but um, in the question they've told us to use k so that's why I've done it. So there should be a theta hanging out at the end there as required. Okay Happy times. How do we use this for part two? Well unfortunately because it is a binomial um, expansion, um, things are going to get worse before they get better, but it, it won't be too bad, okay? They've even told you, hence, by writing sec theta to the 8 in this particular broken up fashion, find um, the integral of sec theta to the 8. So let's just go ahead and start off with their question, the integral of sec theta to the power of 8, d theta. I'll just use their substitution that they've asked me to do, um, but I'm going to notice that there's a part of this that will be helpful to break up and a part of it that will not. So just pause for a moment on this line, okay? Using the previous result, we've got this, uh, let's just copy it here. We've got this result over here, right? Sec to the 2n theta. Now it looks to me like both of these two terms here in the product, in the integrand, they both fit into this. They're both a sec theta to the power of some even number, right? This one's two, this one's six. But when you take a brief moment, like I don't want you to simplify or substitute out blindly, I want you to see why they actually ask you to break this apart, break this apart into this very unusual way, right? If we are really going to use this result from part one, then you're gonna end up with tans in this integrand, right? If you're gonna end up with tans, then in terms of the ways to integrate that, reverse chain rule is probably gonna be the most helpful, and the derivative of tan is sec squared. So that's why they have left this sec squared here and they've pulled out six of them, okay? So what I'm gonna do on the next line, just to make it bleedingly obvious, is I'm gonna write the first factor in the integrand as sec to the two times three. There's my two n um, here. 2n, that's gonna, I might as well highlight it for you. That 2n, or 2 times 3 rather, represents the 2n, so I know what my n will be. I'm just gonna leave that sec squared there. I, I actually want it to stay put. I'm not gonna substitute it out because having something which has a lot of sec terms in it and turning that into something with a lot of tan terms in it is just like one, you traded one villain for another, right? So it's like, leave that, that second one there, okay? It's gonna be fine. All right, now I'm gonna use my identity, right? So this is going to be, according to this, um, I can just use that to expand, like um, I'm gonna do it term by term, right? So it's going to have, here comes some brute brackets, I'm gonna start at nc0, except my particular n is three, right? So I'm gonna go um, three, choose zero. And then um, I have a think about, well, okay, my first term, if you go back to this version here, doesn't actually have any tans or tan squares in it, or I should say, it's got zero of them, so that's why it doesn't appear here. So I'll leave this 3c0 by itself, and then I'm gonna go 3c1, and then tan squared, and I'm just gonna keep on going up until I get to, in this case, it's gonna be 10 to the 6, right? So I'm gonna have, is it easy? 3c2, 10 to the 4, uh, and this is where Q, Q Varen's comment about your answer taking up a whole line. Um, it looks like my answer is actually going to take up more than a whole line, so I'm going to have to rearrange it. Um, but thankfully, I can cheat and do that. So let's just grab all of this, chuck it over here, because I'm not even finished writing the line yet, right? Uh, let's make that a little bit smaller. There we go. Um, that was the sec to the 6 theta, right? So I just got to make sure this sec squared term is still hanging out there, which you can see came from there. Right, so it hasn't disappeared. This is one of the classic things, right? Like your working memory is so overtaken by this big expansion that you did that you forgot to do this thing out the front. It's like when you're doing volumes of solids of revolution, everyone forgets the pi out the front. So it's a really important thing not to miss any terms here. 
Okay, so now we've got these binomial coefficients to deal with and just as a like the way that I do this Like just as a practical thing is that I, I can see what each of these numbers is because I know Pascal's triangle like the first few rows pretty easily This is one three three one and I literally just jot that down for myself Just so I have one less thing that's clogging up my my brain so that I don't make a silly arithmetic error on the next line Now there's one more thing I'm going to do as I move into this big expansion before I integrate which is it's a bit weird and uncharacteristic, but see how I've got this sec squared term over here? I'm gonna multiply it through by everything just to make it really obvious how the integration is gonna work. You'll see why in a second, okay? So, uh, let's begin with, uh, I'll just, yeah, I'll chuck some big brackets there. Um, I'll start with the first binomial coefficient, which is just a one, and then it gets multiplied by, oh, I'll leave that as green because that's what I wrote there. There we go. Um, so there's that first term, right? Then here comes the three from three choose one. Uh, I'm going to put in the sec squared, uh, I'll put it in at the end, uh, but this is tan theta all squared. You'll see in a second why I'm writing it in this way rather than using the contracted um, notation. And I'm just gonna keep on going through. Um, I wasn't meant to make that blue, sorry. Just forgot to change my color, there we go. Next binomial coefficient is another three. Then you're gonna get tan theta to the four. The sec squared is there again. And then finally, what do we got here? Plus, here comes my binomial coefficient, one. Um, there's my last tan theta term. There's six of them this time. And then the sec squared that's hanging out on the end. And hopefully you can see, even though it's taken me a bit longer here, um, you can even see just by looking at it and seeing my colors, you're like, oh, no term has been missed. Um, I haven't accidentally, you know, there's so many terms here, I don't know, like 12, 15, something like that. It's just too easy to miss one, so I just don't trust myself. Okay, now, why did I um, go ahead and multiply through by all of those sec squares? Well, I wanted to make very obvious for myself that this tan theta is my f of x, and then this sec squared is my f dash, right? So you can see every single time, essentially I'm just doing a reverse chain rule. Um, the alternative to doing it this way is to just make sure you do a substitution there, but I don't think that's necessary. This makes it pretty obvious for my brain. Um, working wise, I don't think that Mark needs to see this. This is more for me, making sure I don't stuff myself up, okay? So I'm pretty much ready to go now. I can integrate. I know what the integral of sec squared is by itself. It's just tan. Yeah? Here, um, I'm gonna raise this power by one and then I'm gonna divide through by that new power, which in this uh, instance here, uh, conveniently leaves me just with the three up the top and everything else canceled, and the sec squared disappears having divided through by the derivative of the inside function which was tan, okay? Um, all the rest of them are not quite so neat, so you raise this power by one, becomes five. You divide through by that, well, it doesn't cancel. It just becomes three-fifths, right? Uh, and what's that? Tan to the five. And then the last one, what do you get? Uh, you raise the power up to seven, you divide by that new power, so you get a one-seventh hanging out the front, tan to the seven. And then don't forget, this is indefinite, so you have your constant integration, okay? So there you go. Like I said, the, the state didn't do well on this question, even though when you compare this to some of the other integration questions we've had, it's pretty manageable, right? So um, I hope that makes sense and the, the layout of it is pretty clear for you, okay? Though it is hard, like you, do, you don't know what the result is at the end. Um, so sometimes with trig identities, you can just simplify aimlessly, not show, knowing which is the most helpful way to do it.